morning. Hallelujah, hallelujah, already down on the inside. How many came this morning with a praise the Lord already inside? How many came this morning with a hand clap already on the inside of you? Change circumstances, just one word that will change and kill 
generational curse is just one word that will give hope. God, we praise you and we lift up your holy name as this vessel comes in Jesus' holy name. It's so important, it's so important, it's so important, it's so important for the saints to take on that responsibility to keep hope alive. It's so important, it's so important. So we're gonna we're gonna change the we're gonna change it up just a little bit. We're gonna change it up just a little bit. We're gonna I, by the time you walk out of here, I want you live and energetic and excited about your responsibility and just can't wait to do it. Huh? All right, but right now it looks like we may need to jump a little bit. We may need to get that blood flowing. We may need to jump. <laughs> Just a little bit. I know it's early. I know it's early. I know it's early. I know the saints probably wanted to snuggle under those covers just a little bit longer this morning. Amen. But we are going to keep hope alive. You know, I wanted to offer us just a few methods, or a few things that we need to do is take as part of our responsibility. And the last time what I left us was, was to be encouraged, not only to inspire itself and keep hope alive within ourselves, but to inspire others as well. That's our responsibility. It's our responsibility because there's so many external voices, there's so many things out there designed to break you down. And it is our job to build one another up. That's our job, to build one another up. And I spoke uh, a lot about... I guess from the perspective of, of uh, African-American women, and then I looked at African-American, being African-American as a whole, being black as a whole, um, but as being a saint, just being a Christian, just being a Christian, it's our responsibility to encourage one another because we have things coming against us. We have things coming against us that uh, wants us to doubt the word of God. Okay. They come against us to want us to doubt the power of God. Things that come against us, and it not only just attack our thoughts, but attacks our physical bodies as well. It attacks our mental state, our emotional state. It attacks us. Amen. These things are designed to marginalize us. These things are designed to minimize us. Amen. But we have to make conscious decisions to keep hope alive for ourselves and to help someone else. So I gave us three points. I gave us three points. We want to remain hopeful. This is for ourselves. And to instill hope in others. The second thing was to maintain faith. So I'm going to start with maintaining faith. And then the third thing is to pray. So the three things that we want to do to counteract these things that come against us, these negative things that come against us, we want to remain hopeful. And sometimes that's hard to do. Remain hopeful and instill hope in someone else and we're going to do this by using the instruments that we have. We're going to use our voice, and we're going to use these gifts and talents that God has given us to instill hope in someone else. 
Maintain faith and pray. Because we're going to have to pray sometime. We're going to have to pray. Amen. This, this, this maintaining faith, this maintaining faith, sometimes this seems to be a difficult thing to do. And we have to, we have to consider some things whenever we're maintaining faith. What we're going to maintain faith in, for one. What we're going to maintain faith in. And how much we're willing to give to maintain this faith. You know, if we could just reprogram ourselves, if we could just reprogram ourselves and take out all that negative stuff, we'd be pretty good. If we could just program by reprogram ourselves, think about the times that you've given up stuff just because somebody said you couldn't do. Think about the times you've given up stuff just because you doubt it because of what statistics says. Think about the times that you've given up stuff. You could have you could have done all you could have gone to Ivy League, you could have done all sorts of things. But we've given up stuff just because there was an external voice that said we couldn't do. Sometimes we give up stuff just because it's a doctor. As a doctor, they may say something to you, and we'll trust and believe that doctor. And we may give up stuff. Amen. I went to the doctor, and I won't call any names, but I went to a doctor. The doctor said I was fine. Another doctor called him. The doctor said, put her on some high blood pressure medicine. Call me back in, so I want to put you on some high blood pressure medicine. I said, you, you told me I didn't need high blood pressure medicine. I said, so because another doctor called you, you decide you're going to put me on high blood pressure medicine. He said, well, ma'am, it won't hurt you. My mom is a pharmacist, and she's been taking it for years. I said, I'm not your mama. I'm not your mama. I'm not your mama. And I'm not taking this medicine just because you said to take it because somebody else said to take it. Whenever you told me, you're the specialist. You're the specialist, and you told me I didn't need high blood pressure medicine. So sometimes we relinquish control, and we relinquish power just because of who people are. Sometimes a lawyer, sometimes you have a lawyer, and a lawyer is not necessarily there on your behalf. And that lawyer would say, well, I, what I would do is I would, I would plead. I would just take a deal. And sometimes you end up in a very uh, unfavorable position just because you took an expert position and it didn't work on your behalf. It didn't work on your behalf. Amen. So there, there sometimes we just give up things. We just give up things. Sometimes you're in an office setting. Sometimes you're in an office setting and you will give up things in an office because somebody says, you can't have those skills. There's no way you could possibly know that. I had somebody tell me that one time. They said, where'd you get this information from? I said, it just came to me. They said, there's no way that you could possibly know that. There is no way, but the God that I serve, the God right. who I serve, right. amen, he has all wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. And my God is the one who imparts this. So yes, there was a way that I could know it. There may not have been a way that she could know it, but the God that I serve made a way for me to know it. Sometimes, sometimes, sometimes we give up things. Amen. But we want to be all God has called us to be. Spiritually, spiritually, mentally, emotionally, financially, and academically, we want to be everything that God has called us to be, has called us to be. Amen. You know, I talked a little bit the last time. Amen. Well, I gave you some pointers, some words. Amen. Some concepts to look up. And some of you, I'm sure, are nerdy enough to go back and look up this stuff. I'm sure. Amen. Because there's some benefits. Amen. There's some benefits to this stuff. Amen. It will re reduce stress. Amen. If you can, if you can just hold fast to faith and give up all the negative stuff, can you imagine? Can you imagine? There's some benefits. You have a positive attitude, a positive outlook on life. You know that God can for yourself and for somebody else. So if somebody come to you with a hung down head, you would have a testimony. Amen. You could. This helps our body, amen, to heal the immune system. This boosts our immune system, actually. Amen, help us to fight viruses, all that sort of stuff. Uh, heart disease, heart health, I mean, it helps us in that way. There are all sorts of things, all sorts of things, if we can maintain. So in maintaining faith, maintaining faith. I talked a little bit about Thomas Aquinas. He was a philosopher and theologian. I mean, he was a doctor of the church. Amen. He believed that a believer had to have faith. Amen. Just saying the word believe and believer. <laughs> he believed that the believer had to have faith. Amen. Sometimes we call ourselves a believer, but sometimes we don't want to believe. 
Sometimes we don't want to believe. We we want to we want to have a whole something that works with our thinking. We want it to be logical. We want all sorts of, but we don't want to have faith and believe. Amen. I'm also of the opinion that a Christian has to believe. Amen. The Bible tells us without faith it's impossible to please God. Because you're going to come up against something sometimes where you got to have faith in God because a man cannot do it for you. Amen. There are some times in our lives whenever we come up against even religious questions and we, we go back to it got to be God. It's got to be God. Even when we're talking to our children sometimes, you ever get in that, in that circle with these kids and they ask you why this and why that? Why? And then ultimately you can, because God did it that way. Because God said it. Amen. Because he is God. He is God. You know, there's a delicate balance sometimes in our Christian walk between faith and reasoning. You know, sometimes there are things that happen in your life and you want to reason through it. Even as a Christian, even, even as a Christian, we have scripture, we have tradition, we have our experiences, we have logic, we have reasoning. These are some things that we, we just kind of go through life and if one doesn't work for us, we draw from something else. Sometimes we know that the Bible is right and we know and we can trust and believe that there's a Holy Ghost because our personal experience, because we had a personal experience. Have you ever tried to talk to someone who hadn't experienced the Holy Ghost? Don't believe in the Holy Ghost. They don't sure don't believe in it the way you believe in it. But you had to draw off your personal experience. I remember whenever I began college. Amen. This was back in the day when we didn't do all the sports that we do today. Amen. Now the word didn't change. We changed. We changed. Amen. We became, we became a little more knowledgeable about, about what the word was saying. Amen. And we changed. But back in the day, I had my pastor to actually write a letter, amen, on my behalf, so I didn't have to go out there and do these things that we weren't supposed to do because we didn't think we were supposed to do them. We didn't think we were supposed to chase a ball around bad again. We didn't think we were supposed to go and play basketball. We didn't think we were supposed to do some of these things, but we know a little better now. We know a little differently now, amen, but in the class that I had to take, the class that I had to take, it was some sort of health course that sort of just kind of talked about physical health. It talked about mental and emotional health, just kind of talked about these things. And one of the things they did, they began to ridicule my religion. They began to ridicule the Holy Ghost. They began to ridicule that thing. And they had some good reasoning. They had some good logic. Amen. They were connecting some dots. They were connecting some dots. But you know what? I went back to my church. Right. I went back to my sanctified Holy Ghost field church. I went back to my church. You know, I tell you, sometimes we got to come out of some other places that sit awfully quiet. We got to come out of some places, amen, that, that we believe in the spirit and the spirit lives inside of us and the spirit guides us. We better get something that moves us sometime. I went back to my church, that little country church up there in Litro. Went back to my church where the preacher was preaching Holy Ghost and that with fire. I went back to that church and I had an experience. Amen. And they couldn't tell me anything. I went back. I went back. I went back. Amen. Sometimes we've got to go back. Sometimes we've got to ask the Lord for another dip. Sometimes we got to ask the Lord to move me again. Sometimes to feel me one more time. Amen. Do what you want to do. If you want to roll me, it's all right. If you want to rock me, it's all right. It's all right with me. Whatever you do, but I've got to know that you're real. I've got to know. i got to know. So I went back to that class and you know I want to make an A. You know y'all know, y'all know I'm kind of nerdy too. I wanted to make an A in that class, so whenever I had to take the test and they were talking about all these things, I said, well, the book said well, you said, well, the instructor said, I tell him, but I knew from myself what the Lord said to me. And his word is right. His word is true. And you know what? I love the power of the Holy Ghost. I love the Holy Ghost to be active in my life. I love to know that he can move me sometimes. Even when I feel down and out. Amen. Right? Feeling a little sorry for myself. just a little bit, but there's a delicate balance between faith and reasoning. Faith and reasoning. Amen. Faith, that you've got to have a certain measure of faith. You've got to have a certain measure of faith. Amen. And we do a certain measure of reasoning. 
Amen. I told us, let's go back and look at some of the philosophy around religion. I'm not just talking Christianity. If you look at the philosophy of religion as a whole, amen, you will see some things, amen, that actually will challenge us and will actually help us. So there is strong rationalism, there's fideism, there's critical rationalism, and there's neutralism. Amen. Strong rationalism. Amen. It states that religious concepts are validated by proof. That means you've got to prove it. If you can't prove it, it can't happen. Well, the God I serve, he doesn't have to prove anything to anybody. Amen. Even whenever Pilate or Pilate handed him over to Herod and Herod wanted to see some sort of miracle performed, it wasn't so he could believe and trust him. He just wanted to see a miracle. But the God I serve does not have to stoop to anybody. Amen. Just to entertain. Amen. He yeah. can do what he desires to do at any time. So my belief system, whether or not I believe it, whether or not I can prove it, God is still God and he is not limited by my belief, by my proof. He is not. He is not limited. Amen. An example of rationalism is not believing in the supernatural. Mm. If you don't have faith, you can't, but you can't move from the natural to the supernatural. Well, I want to move to the supernatural. See, I want to be caught up one day. I want to move to the supernatural. If I never do anything here on earth, one day I want to move to the supernatural. Amen. Fideism, fideism. Amen. It recognizes that there is conflict. Amen. Between belief and between that and logic. Amen. This doctrine, amen, it says that knowledge depends on faith or revelation. Amen. So strictly that. Everything that happens, it, this, is, this is faith. Every, absolutely everything that happens that is faith. Amen. But we believe that God has also given principles. God has simply given principles like seed, time, and harvest. God has simply given principles. God has given laws, the laws of gravity. God has simply given some principles that we must live by, that we must live by. Amen. It's the exclusive or basic reliance upon faith alone. We don't believe in faith alone, not just faith alone. Amen. But we do highly believe on faith. Amen. Critical rationalism, that's where we typically will fall at. Amen. It compromises between strong rationalization and fideism. Amen. The God that we serve, amen, he's the God of eternity. He set absolutely everything in place. Amen. He, he gave the rules, the laws, amen, things you learn, the laws of physics. God created that, the visible and the invisible. God created that, but at any time, God has allowed himself to step into time and change some things. God has allowed himself to perform miracles. He is God. He can turn water into wine. He can defy the laws of gravity. He can walk on water. He is God. He can do absolutely anything that he desires to do, he desires to do. Amen. And neutralism is reasoning from a neutral position. Based on known truth, based on known truth. But I'm here to tell you today, it's not a whole lot that we know is true. It's not a whole lot. There is not a whole lot that we know. Amen. It's true. And I'll tell us why in just a little bit. Amen. Thomas Aquinas, he argues that understanding truth about God are accomplished both through reasoning and faith. Thus, it's necessary for every person to have a good reason for your belief. That makes sense to me. It's necessary because you're going to be tried sometimes. You're going to be tested sometimes. If you haven't been tested in the last 15 to 18 months, I'm not sure what, it, what, what we need. I'm not sure what we need. But there's going to come something that's going to test you, and you're going to have to have a reason why you're holding fast to Christianity. You're going to have to have a reason why you hold fast to reading your Bible. Because sometimes your flesh doesn't want to read the Bible. You're going to have to have a reason why do I fast and why do I pray and why do I continue to seek this God and the power of this God. Why? 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 Amen. It's important for us to have a good reason. And I know most of us saying, well, I just want to go to heaven. Amen. I don't want to spend eternity in hell. And that's a good enough reason for me. Amen. I don't want to go to hell. Eternity is too long. Yeah. Amen. From what I understand, hell is too hot. Hell is too hot. Amen. Faith, 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 faith. Faith, 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 faith. Amen. There are some simple things that we think just work for us. There are some simple things, some simple things. Amen. Some things we know, we just believe is the truth. We just absolutely believe is the truth. 
Hey Amen. I got a little grandson, Caleb. He said, one plus one is two. He says, when he's two years old, he says, one plus one is two. Hey Amen. Does he know that's a fact or is he simply repeating something his mother said? Do we know that's a fact or are we simply depending on what somebody else has told us and we're just repeating what somebody else has said? See, there's a lot of things that we repeat just because somebody has told us this. Science says that the earth is 4.5 billion years old. How do you know? Who has lived that long to tell it? But we're repeating these things as fact. Somebody says 7.7 .7 billion people are in the world. How do you know? Have you visited 7.7 .7 billion people to know that they're here in the world? So we're just repeating some things and we call these things fact where they may not be factual. There's some people living in some places and we haven't seen them. There are some animals that they're saying they haven't seen. They thought they were extinct for years. You can see those animals. You think you see every person in the world? I, I don't think we know as much as we think we know. Now, when I confessed that a few weeks ago, y'all thought it was funny when I said, I don't know much. I don't know much. Amen. But I know that I didn't create myself, so there must be a creator. Amen. Again, 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 again. The reason that we don't know as much as we think we know is because we don't have the time. We don't have the opportunity, and we don't have the ability to verify everything ourselves. We don't have the time. If you, if you took the time just to say, well, you can't have a number, whole numbers, you truly can have whole numbers, but when you go and study some other things, you find out there's not many things that are whole, it's unless you're talking about the Lord himself, amen, holy one. When you, but when you start looking at other things, the incremental, you start looking at all sorts of degrees of things, it's not as clear as it seems to be. Mm. Amen. Here we have, amen, here we have people who feel like that, that, that we can define things, that we can, that we can uh, 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 put things out there and we're practicing, that we can just tell you you need to obey a law and we're practicing law, that you, you need to do something when it comes down to medicine and they're practicing medicine. They're practicing medicine instead of doing something that the Lord has told us to do. Now, I'm not telling everybody to do this. Now, I, I don't have much time. I'm going to have to get through this real quick. I'm not telling everybody to do this. But I had one person to tell me whenever I was in, in high school, one person to tell me that something was wrong with, with us. Something was wrong with us as church people because we fast. We didn't need to fast. Something was wrong with us. We couldn't think clearly because we were fasting. Something was wrong with us. Well, I'm here to tell you today, I don't have to have a piece of bacon to think. I don't have to have it to think. I don't have to have that to think, but I do have to have the Lord. I do have to have the Lord. Amen. I've heard some people say, well, the doctor said I have to take my medicine. I'm not telling anybody to come off your medicine. God can heal you with your medicine like he can heal you off your medicine. He's got um, a pill is not going to hold him captive. He's still God. Amen. I, I heard somebody say, the doctor said that I couldn't come off my medicine and fast, that I had to take my medicine, so I had to eat. Well, you don't have to eat steak and eggs to take your medicine. Amen. But that's a whole different story. Amen. But this lady found out. This lady found out that whenever she did fast, she didn't need the medicine. She found out whenever she did fast, she didn't need the medicine. She said, you know what, mother? She said, I'm going to keep fasting. She said, I, I believe that eventually I can wean myself off of this medicine. Well, the doctor doesn't profit any if you come off medicine. Amen. It's whole, there was a whole economic system built around sacrifices, a whole economy that was built around that stuff. Well, guess what? There's a whole economy that's built around us being sick as people. There is a whole economy. They're not rushing too, too fast to find, figure out some sort of way to get us off dialysis. They're not trying to figure out how to get off the of high blood pressure. They're not trying to figure out these things. Amen. Not the way they're putting effort in some other stuff. They're not. Amen. They're just some things you're not going to be considered equal in. Amen. You will go to jail for a little weed. You will go to jail. Yes, a whole lot of us have gone to jail for a little weed. Where they can have a whole opioid addiction. Amen. And have a whole addiction that becomes a sickness. I'm here to tell you that some people are not motivated by you being well. Amen. That's why to seek the Lord, we've got to have faith. Come on, 
church. Come on, church. Y'all not like y'all act right. like y'all haven't lived this stuff before. Y'all act right. like that we're some of them and we've had some of those privileges. But I'm here to tell you today, anything that we benefit from, they benefit more. Anything that they give us, if they give you a dollar, they probably get it too. I'm here to tell you today, we had better serve God. We had better be empowered by the Spirit of God. Because the Spirit of God is not defined by the economy. My God can do, amen, what the economy can do. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Let me, let me, let me, let me, let me just talk. Let me just talk. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Amen. Aquinas, when he went through a, amen, a couple of scriptures, a couple of scriptures. Amen. Job 11 and 7. Amen. It said, can thou by searching find out God? Can thou find out the Almighty into perfection? I know that's King James Version. That doesn't mean a whole, whole lot to us. That's Shakespearean kind of stuff. I'm going to read contemporary English version. Amen. Can you understand the mystery surrounding God all powerful? Can you understand that we can't understand these things, but God will enlighten you to give you understanding. The Holy Ghost is designed to illuminate our minds, illuminate our thoughts. Amen. The auction of the Holy Ghost is designed to move us and move us in the way of God. Amen. They are higher than the heavens and deeper than the grave. So what can you do when you know so little? When we know so little? When we know so little in these mysteries outreach the heavens and the oceans? Amen. There are mysteries that people haven't tapped into. There are mysteries that haven't been unfolded yet. But the God I serve, he knows and he understands. Amen. He created the mysteries. It's his pleasure. Amen. To have Hallelujah, hallelujah, Jesus. Uh, hallelujah, but behold, Jesus is the great. He is the great. He is the source of our knowledge. Hey, Amen. we can't search him out. He is the great. Hey, Amen, I don't care what your capacity is. Hey, Amen, we got some really smart people in here. Hey, Amen, but I don't care what your capacity is. You will never have been God. You will never know everything that God knows. Uh, hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Paul states, for we know in part. Yeah. Amen. We know in part. Amen. We prophesy in part. Amen. But one day we're going to see things clearly. That's when the Lord opens them up to us. That's when the Lord reveals them to us. Hallelujah. There's some things that come out of our mouth sometimes. Amen. It's the word of the Lord. Amen. Sometimes things come out of our mouth. We don't even realize we're speaking a prophetic word. Amen. Hey man, but we got to speak what the Lord said, speaker. We got to say and do what the Lord said, do it. Hey man, somebody needs us. Uh, hey man, for encouragement. Uh, hallelujah, Jesus. Uh, hallelujah, hallelujah. Mm, hallelujah. Let me settle down. Let me settle down. Let me settle down. Hey man, some people, some people may not. Hey man, Thomas thought some people didn't have the mental capacity. Hey man, some people didn't have the mental capacity. Amen. To reason on a high level. That's why you had to have faith sometimes. Some people didn't have a, a mental capacity. But I'm here to tell you today that God so loved the world. That he gave his only begotten son. That whosoever believed in us shall not perish. But shall have everlasting life. God can open up to you whatsoever he wants to. Hey man, I can remember. I keep testifying. I keep testifying. Hey man, I keep testifying. Hey man, I can remember being on a consecration. Hey Amen. Being on a consecration. Hey man, and the Lord would deal with me. He would take me to my whiteboard and have me to just start drawing. Hey man, I just start drawing. I just put whatever he'd say. Hey man, now if I didn't start, he wouldn't complete it. If I didn't start, so he would just tell me to get up and start drawing. I'd get up and start drawing. Hey man, I had different people from different countries. Hey man, I actually walk into my office. Walk into my office and ask me, where did you get that from? Where did you get that from? I said, what do you mean? I was, I felt like the Lord told me to draw it. I started drawing it. Hey man, began to teach me various concepts, various beliefs that I can use. Hey man, I can use in my job. Hey man, and I can use in my personal life. Hey man, because it was the Lord, I didn't have to go to school for it. Hey man, I didn't have to 
there had a teacher. Uh, they had nobody but the Lord. Hallelujah, Jesus. Uh, I know, I know, I know for myself. Uh,
when you've never seen rain. <laughs> There's just a few things. It allows you to leave your familiar surroundings and yet be blessed by God. And sometimes we have hope in those familiar surroundings. I've been doing this job forever. I know these people. I've been whatever, whatever. Amen. It will let you respond to something that's unusual. Amen. And once you look at it and discern it, recognize that it's the spirit of the Lord, just like Moses in that burning bush. Just like Joshua. Amen. This, this is what will happen. Amen. You can use some unconventional methods to secure some things that you need to secure. To gain greater access to them. Amen. Like Daniel and those Hebrew boys. Amen. Holding fast. Amen. It will allow you to commit to some things and stay right there. Stay right there. Stay right there. No, I can't eat that. No, I can't defile myself with that. No, I can't. I can't do that. It will allow. It will allow. Amen. It will allow you to press through. Press through a crowd. Press through a crowd. Amen. Where you're unwanted and people think that, oh, you're defiled and you shouldn't be there. It allows you to press through. Amen. Just to touch them up. Where there's healing, where there's deliverance. Amen. It allows you to call out on the name of Jesus when everybody else is trying to get you to be quiet. Yeah. Amen. When everybody else is trying to get you to be quiet. Amen. There's some things in, in life that we need and only faith. It's going to move us. Now, y'all know me. Y'all know me. Some people are going to turn me off right now. I'm black. I've been black. I was born black. I'm going to die black. And you know what? All of us came from one black person. If we study anthropology, all of us came from one being. You can't get white. From, you can't get black and white. You can get white and black. Amen. But some of us, the only way we're going to get things that we should get is by faith in God. And nobody's going to tell us. Nobody's going to tell us that. Some people want us to be satisfied with the same watered down gospel they have. Not expecting anything to happen. Not expecting anybody to be. Amen. I expect in, I mean, great things to happen in your life. But the God I serve. Amen. I made in his image. I made in his image. I made in his image. We're all made in his image. And that is key for our young ladies. Whenever we go to college, that is key. That is key. My dissertation, I actually did a dissertation on African-American Christian women attending predominantly white institutions of higher education in the United States. One of the things that's key to our learning is that we're made in his image. We're made in his likeness. So I'm made in the likeness of God. You think, you think God is second in class? You think God can't function? God can't think just because a person tells you that and Somebody says that, that figures don't lie. Well, I'm here to tell you that I was an accountant and liars figure. I was an accountant by trade. Liars figure. All right, so some, sometimes you build statistics. They'll build a story just to say you can't do, you can't accomplish, you can't succeed. Sometimes they'll build those numbers. And, and sometimes it's against you, but sometimes it's just to help them feel better, to bring them up, to give them the confidence that they need. And I'm here to tell you today, sometimes they want you to stick close. I mean, they, they want what you have. They don't necessarily want to pay you for what, what you got. But they want what you have. They want what you have. You are made in God's image. And we need to know that. We are made in God's image, just like anybody else. Now, we're, we're not saying that they're any worse. All of us are made in God's image. We have got to have faith and believe that God is for us. Can I get somebody to say that? Amen. Today? God is for me. God is for me. God is for me. Now I need you to believe that. God is for me. God is for me. God is for me. Yes. Look at what he invested in you. Yes. Consider what he has invested in you. Consider what he has invested in you. Think about yourself. Think about yourself in what God has invested in you. God is for you. Amen. I, I apologize again. But that third one is still out there. We got to pray. We've got to pray. We've got to pray. We've got to keep those lines of communication open with God. We've Amen. got to pray. We've got to pray. We've got to pray. Amen. Okay, I apologize. I'm sorry. 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 I'm sor
Well, I have the pastor to come up. I'll turn back in the hands of the pastor. Lord, we thank you. We thank you. We thank you, God. We thank you for the encouragement, God, that you give us, God. And to know that it's worthwhile us holding on to our faith and not just giving it up. You know, we should maintain faith in God. Even over the last few weeks, it's been trying to encourage ourselves and it's been trying to encourage some other people. Some other people we've been protected from in so many months and so many whatever. Amen. Now we're exposed to them again. But God, we thank you that you had already spoken to us. Amen. For us to uh, not only encourage ourselves, but to encourage people as well. Amen. God, you have a plan for us. You have a plan for us. You have a plan for us. And we thank you for it. We thank you for your word, God. We thank you for what you're doing, God. We thank you. We thank you. We thank you. We say hallelujah to your name because you're so great and you're so wonderful. God, we ask you to just help us as we continue to strive to maintain our faith. God, there's some things that need to happen. God, we need your help. We need your help. There's some there's some things that we, we have our hands on, God. We don't even know how to let go of some of these things. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, I'm... I'm going to ask uh, at this time if we will go on and stop our media. If we're going to stop our media, if we're going to stop our media. Thank you for joining us. 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 Thank you for joining us.